so we saw that why do we need linked list so that was the thing which I explained using the example that we have only memory for 10 storing 10 integers initially a b c d and g were five integers that were stored randomly at different memory locations and now if we had to in store an integer array of size 5 even though i have five memory locations left but because they are not contiguous so we cannot store that array so now the memory manager was in distress but what helped him was data structure called linked list so why it worked was because in the linked list now a node a typical node contains both the data part so it has a data and pointer to the next element so we will see it now very much in a clean way again as a revision also so let's say so what we saw was we have some memory locations so let's say first element is stored at memory location 100 the value is 52 so this is memory and let's say this is the value this is the first element let's say the second element is located at 240 and the value is 3 so next let's go and say the third element is located at 306 and it has value say 45 so now how are we going to arrange it so now it's very easy if the number it was just an array so we would have said that okay we would have considered only the values like 52 3 and 45 because i know if this starts at let's say 100 so this will be at 104 if integer is 4 bytes and then this will be at 108 but now the thing is these are not contiguous each element is stored at some whatever available memory location so this is the scenario so what i need to do is i need to capture both the value and the memory location of the next element so that after reading the value here of the first element i can go to the next element and read those values so how to do that thing so we represent usually in literature each node is represented like this cute little box and it is further divided into this is the mem the value which is 52 the first one and then i put a cute little pointer kind of link which tells that okay next element is there which is value is 3 and now again it points to where the next node memory location is there and it says that the value is 45 and it's and finally if I have three elements to denote the end I say the next element of the last is just null it points to nowhere but if I have the list I should know the starting point the starting point of the link list is very important so this is there should be some start so it's kind of a puzzle game so it's quite interesting so what happens now the puzzle game starts here it says that okay this is at memory location 100 next element is 3 it is at memory location 240 and the next element is at memory location 306 so these are the memory locations so what happens now is that this is the value this is the memory location where this element is stored but now here we should also get the pointer which will tell that okay where is the next element so basically it tells this 
pointer is a pointer which tells us that okay this next one is 240 and this next one is 306 and what does start tell now so start will tell the address of the first element so it will be 100 so this way what happens is this is the linked list and what we do is that we have a start pointer so we are basically traversing so if we make a cute small table so it will be something like it will have some memory locations and again some memory so what will happen here is that okay so let's say first one is 100 memory location next one is 240 and the last one is 306 so i now know that okay the first element which is 52 is here now i have the pointer so this pointer stood that where is the next element so it points here and say that okay next element is at 240 and here i go there and find that okay the value is 3 next it is say that okay now there is a pointer here it says you have to go now to the next link which is 306 and the value i find is 45 and now how to find that this is the end so this pointer will be pointing to null so it means that okay it's zero now you have ended the list so this is linked list and now what we will see is how to represent linked list in C program so we know that okay when we have to use uh, represent more than one element then we use structure so we say that okay struct and this is a node so I write node I have something to write so let's say these are integers so first thing will be data what will be the next thing so next thing how what do you remember so what we use to denote memory in C so yeah the quick answer is pointers so we use pointers so pointers tell that okay where is the memory location of the next element so here we say that okay so this is again this box is of type struct node and it has one part is integer data and another part part is the memory location of the next one so how to find the memory location of the next one so i make a pointer to the struct node so i will write struct node star next so this is now very important so this is an data type of type structure and here what I do I have this one so if we see so this is now a pointer so this is a pointer and how we represent it so this is a pointer to the next element I and of type struct node so I write struct node star and next so this is the way to define the node of a linked list so now what happens let's say that we want to make one node so what we will do is so what we will define struct node int data and then struct node star next so this is the way to define a node and then let's say I want to make a link small link list so I will say that okay the first element is 3 this is the starting pointer because I have to locate somewhere 
I have to go to the starting point then I say that okay the next element is 5 and this is also I have a list of just two elements and what happens now let's see so this is our aim now I have to code it in C language so this is something little bit challenging for us So now what we do is <laughs> So what we do now is that okay so we have to code it in C So how we do it is so we will define struct node star start so this is the starting pointer and we will make it equal to null so why because now starting pointer is null nothing is there next what we will do next we will say we have to allocate memory so one very important thing for linked list is another very important programming interview question dynamic memory allocation so this is also one of the buzzword which you are going to most probably get in your interview so dynamic memory allocation so what does it mean so it means that when i write just like int a is equal to 5 so it allocates memory by itself but when I define a pointer so I just say that okay I have a locator which is which will point somewhere but in reality I have to first define the location populate it then only I can say that okay now point to that one so to make it clear so let's say so there is a pointer so let's say this is a table and again we have five memory locations available to store okay so now what i do is that when i say dynamic memory allocation so it means i will reserve some memory that okay store memory three and four for me and i will point at this so this is the work of the pointer to point to the starting location 3. So let's start. So we will say now. So we will start and say start is equal to struct node star m alloc. and then 1 into size of struct node so this is a little bit bigger line but we will understand it so what I wrote is that the start which is the pointer so we try to allocate point it to some memory location which has been allocated so this m alloc allocates memory chunk which is equal to the size of the structure node and then because the m alloc just returns a void star type of memory so i need to typecast it to struct node star so now what happens now my start points to a memory allocation memory location which is which has no value or some garbage value here in both the data and the node star type so now my work is to populate this thing so i will now say start and data is equal to 3 and start next is equal to null 
so what it means now it means now that i have made so this is start and this is now 3 and this is next is null so this is the case now so we developed from this initial stage to now this stage but our goal is the final stage so next what we need to do is that i will say that okay so i have now start next was null but i have to allocate some memory to it also because why because it is now pointing to a node which has data 5 in it so start next is equal to again struct node star m alloc size of struct node so now this again what it does it allocates to memory so here there was 3 it was null so now it removes the null and points it to some memory location of size struct node and now what happens so it just some hanging pointer here so this is now the case so now let's see so again i have to populate this with 5 so i do start next so it comes to this point and then I have to find the data. So this is equal to now 5 and if I have to access this one so I write start next next is equal to null. So now it becomes 5 and this becomes null. So this is now the linked list is now formed but again we see and we see a few more things which I didn't explain but for pointers we use arrow where I've used like here so this means that the structure node has two things the data part and next Part. so both of them can be accessed using the start arrow next so and one more important thing to understand is that start next is the pointer which is pointing to this one and from here because this is a pointer I can access the next element using this one and data using this so this is about linked list And, but we see that it becomes very cumbersome we cannot go on writing start next next and then again data like that so this is just to understand how to create nodes but we will next class we will write insert function to see how to create a linked list okay so thanks a lot for listening if you like this lecture please subscribe to my channel you can put a like on this one thanks a lot